They are violent, with the fastest winds on Earth. They are awesome in their variety and magnitude. They are deadly. In the last century, they claimed a million lives. Yet men continue to pursue them, risking their lives to learn the mysteries within untamed Earth's wild winds. Tornadoes may spring from out of nowhere and without warning, packing more concentrated violence than any other windstorms on Earth. They've been clocked at over 300 miles an hour. It looks like it's kind of made a little bit. I think we're all right, but it's going to be close. It's either stalling, or going east, or maybe slightly this way. Getting good steady footage. With their endless energy, they cast a deadly, unpredictable path of destruction through countryside and city. In the last century, tornadoes have killed thousands of people in the United States alone. Oh, yeah. that thing is violent. That is a violent tornado. That will kill you. On May the 3rd, 1999, one of the most powerful tornado systems ever to hit the U.S. hovered threateningly over Oklahoma. The storm created twister after twister, bringing death and devastation across hundreds of miles. As the tornadoes began to touch down, television weather forecasters warned of the impending danger. Emergency vehicles rushed into action. Scientists hurried to the scene to analyze this most natural phenomenon of nature's might. What they witnessed was unprecedented. Multiple vortex tornadoes. Skies blackened by the storm were illuminated by exploding flashes from power lines. A tornado over a mile wide was observed. At least one funnel struck with winds over 300 miles per hour. Its driving vortex caused damage rated as an F5, the most powerful on the Fujita damage rating scale. At least 76 tornadoes traveled across Oklahoma and Kansas in a 20-hour marathon of devastation. There's all kinds of... There's gas leaking everywhere. Gas leaking. Nearly a thousand people were injured. 50 died. Where's our baby at? Right here, my right baby. I got it. I got it. It's okay. They're fine. Let's go up here. We don't have anything now. But we're all safe. Everybody safe? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm scared. We scared. From our house down to um, Western is gone. The morning after revealed the dimensions of the disaster. Hardest hit were of the dozens of stricken communities for Oklahoma City and Wichita, Kansas. In Oklahoma City alone, 2,000 homes were reduced to rubble. Cars were mangled and destroyed. 10,000 homes were severely damaged in Oklahoma. Losses of at least 500 million pounds were reported. Anne Sanderson was one of the first to return to what was left of her home. You think of all that you've worked for, and it's gone. It's like, it's like a box of matches. It's just timber wood now. Still, there were survivors. I, I ran into the den and laid down, and it blew those the big windows out in front of the house. And, and they were all glass, and they came across hitting in the back, cut my back. As the National Guard kept watch to prevent looting, people picked through the remains of their past. For some, all they had left was each other. <laughs> the 
The tornadoes left a 90-mile path of destruction behind them. As the survivors began to rebuild their lives, all they could ask was, how could this have happened? But exactly when and how are tornadoes formed? Their inception remains mysterious. Only lately, with sophisticated tools like Doppler radar and aircraft, have we had the means to penetrate into the hearts of these awesome storms to map their origins. To collect data on the behavior of tornadoes, meteorologists risk their lives to get close to them. Since tornadoes are elusive and unpredictable, even leading scientists must chase them. So they become storm chasers, conducting much of their research from the front seat of a speeding van. And as any tornado chaser will tell you, that's where the excitement is. Here's a place where uh, concrete has been scoured. See it right there? Wow. Power pole's going down. I'm too close. I'm turning around. Many tornado chasers will go almost anywhere at any time to get close to those whirling, unpredictable and dangerous storms. Tornadoes are absolutely beautiful. You look at this incredibly intense vortex whirling dirt around in the middle of a, a wheat field uh, with a magnificent uh, thunderstorm above it, uh, the puffy, puffy white uh, cotton and the mammatus, the beautiful uh, mammatus underneath the, uh, uh, the anvil of the storm. And sometimes you see beautiful sculpted, uh, smooth striations around the edge of the cloud base that produces the tornado. It's, uh, it's, uh, tornadoes and uh, their parent storms are works of art. They're sculptures. To better understand these phenomena, several United States government agencies and universities cooperated in a field project called Vortex. Uh, the Vortex, which is an acronym for the Verification of the Origins of Rotation in Tornadoes experiment, was a very large experiment conducted in 1994-1995 here in the Southern Plains. The object of Vortex was to try to answer some of the questions to why do tornadoes form and what is their structure. But during Vortex, uh, we had uh, many different instruments out in the field. Uh, among them were a number of airborne Doppler radars. The daring mission was to fly near where storms were expected to occur, then utilize Doppler radar to document the structure of supercell storms. Ground-based mobile Doppler radars were dispatched to intercept the same storms. The Doppler on Wheels is a mobile weather radar. And what we've done is taken a very high-performance research radar and put it on a truck. And the idea is really pretty simple. We're just trying to get closer to the weather than a typical radar would be um, when interesting weather comes along. The problem with most radars is that when a tornado or something very small occurs far away, you can't get a very sharp image. And basically, it's like trying to see something from very far away. You can't see small details. What we do with the Doppler and wheels is we take the radar to the weather instead of waiting for the weather to come to us. By taking the radar to the weather, we're able to collect a lot more data and get very, very sharp images, um, literally a thousand times sharper than you can get with a radar that might be much further away. Vehicles from the National Severe Storm Laboratory were also dispatched. Uh, the ultimate goal of Vortex, of course, is to be able to understand why tornadoes form in some occasions and not in others. And the ultimate goal uh, is to improve our ability to forecast tornadoes so that we can give the public much better, much more timely warnings so that we can save lives. To further this goal, ongoing projects continue to chase storms. Well, um, scientific storm chasing and responsible storm chasing is a lot different than what you might see in the movies. 
we do not take reckless chances. We don't stand directly in the path of a strong tornado. Uh, we're not driving off into fields and cutting people off on the highways. Those are just dumb things to do. Um, and statistically, you might get away with a dumb thing once or twice, but we're collecting data every year. We've been going out for several years, and we'll keep going out. If you keep doing dumb things, sooner or later, something bad is going to happen, either to yourself or to other people. Uh, we drive under fairly hazardous conditions. The road may be wet, covered with hail, wind is blowing, visibility may be poor. We may be in country roads, which are not very good. Uh, so uh, we need to be very careful while driving. Lightning is also a significant danger, and we uh, try not to go outside uh, of the van or truck or car if there's a lot of lightning activity. Well, the Doppler and wheels are going into very hostile environments uh, fairly frequently. Um, the environment in a supercell thunderstorm uh, can cause damage to vehicles. There's very high winds, uh, extremely heavy rain, and frequently large hail. It's not uncommon to see hail as big as baseballs or softballs. Uh, we see that probably once or twice a year, even though we're trying to avoid it. Yes, we've had our windshield uh, broken many times by, by uh, golf ball or baseball size hail. We've been in situations where we had to turn around because the road was washed away. We've had instances when we could not go down the road any further because telephone poles were down, debris was in the way. And really, up until 20 or 25 years ago, when, when a number of us began to go out and chase storms, uh, we really didn't know it was out there. Uh, we, would, we would occasionally see photographs or hear of accounts of, of non-scientists of what was out there. And we would get a glimpse, perhaps, of, of the beautiful things that were out there. But it wasn't until we began to go out and hunt these things down that we began to find out that, yes, some of these things are seen time and time again. There are other types of clouds that we see in only rare occasions. Tornadoes have many different appearances. There are different types of tornadoes. Multiple vortex tornadoes, skinny tornadoes, wide tornadoes. Many mysteries remain for the University of Oklahoma researchers, even though they've completed the field work for Vortex. Um, since then, we're doing radar-only studies because we found that the radars really provide the most valuable data. And we've been calling our project Rotate, which is Radar Observations of Tornadoes and Thunderstorms Experiment. One of the most important problems to solve after we learn how the tornadoes form is how to distinguish between thunderstorms that produce weak tornadoes and thunderstorms that produce very significant, deadly tornadoes. 90% of all tornadoes are fairly weak. They have winds maybe 100, 120 miles an hour. But a few percent of them have very, very strong winds, 200, maybe 300 miles an hour. From a forecast point of view, from the public's point of view, those are the ones you really want to know about because those are the ones that you read about in the newspaper where they've destroyed entire towns. By watching a tornado be born, we hope we can understand how that process works. Just five minutes more warning or 10 minutes more warning could probably save many lives. From just 7995 and with 0% finance over two years, the Vauxhall Corsa Comfort handles life beautifully. Sleigh bells ring, Thank you. This Christmas at Woolworths, there's 20% off all crackers, stainless steel woks for under a tenner, and two quid off 1.7 kilogram tins of Quality Street. Of course, with offers like these, you might forget what you went in for. Hey! How long's you been? Fourteen eighty five, the Battle of Bosworth brings peace. Oh, this entire updraft is a flying saucer. Panning back, I've got to get this updraft just once in my life. On May the thirtieth, nineteen ninety eight, scientists from Project Rotate chased a giant twister as it gathered force on the plains of South Dakota. Interstate. Project Rotate uh, observed the Spencer tornado, and we collected probably one of the best data sets in tornadoes ever in Spencer. Um, it was a very unfortunate event for Spencer, of course, but for science, it will prove very valuable. 
A tornado classified as F5, the most damaging intensity, was spinning towards the small rural community of Spencer. It would destroy nearby farms, every business and church, the grain silo, bank, city hall, and nearly every home. When we went to Spencer, um, I mean, this was a very dramatic tornado. Uh, we drove up very close to it. We were one mile from the center of the tornado, but of course it was a big tornado, so we were probably half a mile from the edge of where the damage was. It started uh, out here west of town about two miles, and it destroyed them farms out there. Just before the storm, I went out on the front porch, and I looked to the north, and I saw this really, really black, thick cloud. So I came into the house and called my neighbor and told her to come right over because I was scared and she should be too. When I seen the tornado coming into Spencer, it was just like a black wall. You couldn't even tell it was a tornado, just a black wall. And then you could see the stuff churning inside. There's a car, me and your dad seen a car. And that's, he said, well, he didn't believe me, so he we got to come out and, and see. Like, I got to see, he says. So oh, we stepped out, and it was right about four or five blocks away. Oh. Me and this guy were sitting in the bedroom in the dark because all the lights had went out. And Mama come running in and said there was a tornado coming. And then I turned to walk into the to the living room where we were sitting. That This friend of mine was there. And, um, she was sitting on the couch, and she says, what's that noise? And I said, to the basement. And, I, and so we ran to the basement. And I looked straight west and, and to the south. I saw some dirt. I really didn't see anything. But she was insistent, so I went down the basement with her. So she was here in about two seconds. And her and I went down in the basement under our stairwell and stayed there, I don't know how long. Very, very scared, very, very scared. And the wind just howled to our basement. And I looked out the window and I saw everything was just in a flurry. And just objects, trees, branches, uh, everything was just flying. She was at the bottom of the step and she said something to me like, get down here. So I ran down there and then she was kind of frozen in, the, in this new bathroom we had built in the basement. And I looked out the window and said, get away from the window. And I said, get in the shower. So I got my hands and knees in the shower and I had my, the, she was sitting on the seat and I was kind of crunched over in the corner with my head down. And she says, I'm going to heaven, you're going with me, start praying. As soon as I got to the bottom of the basement steps, the door blew open. And dirt started coming down in and well, we can't have that. So I turned around and run back up the steps and tried to push the door shut, and it pushed back and knocked me about three steps back, so I got a better hold of it and give it a harder shot. I don't know when it disappeared. It, it just, it was gone, and all of a sudden the chimney was on top of me. I didn't know what it was. And then the north wall of the shower collapsed and just come right around us, and. I think I also said something like, well, if it's my time, I'm ready to go. No, it was nasty, but it was quick. Um, After the tornado hit and the house that we were in was completely gone, all was there was some stairs and a little bit of the floor. All you could see was sky, and when I walked up, we were on the very south end of Spencer, right where the tornado hit mainly. And I looked towards the north, and it looked like the whole town was just gone. The first house that we come to was our city finance officer's house and her husband was standing on the corner looking looking for her, he said he couldn't find her. And I asked him if she'd made it into the basement. Well, she, he said I think she went back upstairs to shut the door because her door blew off. And I says, well, I'll go see if I can look for her and find her. And I, says, I started moving some debris away from the house to get in, to get into a window or something to get into the basement to look for her. And I found her buried underneath the debris. As survivors arrived at a nearby shelter, friends and relatives waited, hoping to find their loved ones. A 
about half of the town's population were taken to hospitals. For us, it was actually even more disturbing, I think, the next day. Um, the Rotate crew uh, went into Spencer the next morning uh, to survey the damage. The damage in Spencer um, was really severe. Um, the southern part of the town was just about completely destroyed. There were no structures standing. Um, we saw house foundations where the houses had been completely blown away. There were vehicles that had been lofted um, and thrown other places. Uh, the trees that were still there had been stripped of branches. Total destruction. You know, usually when there's a tornado, well, there you repair. You, know, you lose a roof or something like that. But the total destruction is what really surprised and shocked me. But in Spencer, for the first time, we are able to correlate the damage that occurred on a street-by-street -street basis with the winds that we measured as it went through Spencer. The community at this point has no viability. It's totally destroyed. And so uh, we've got a, a serious short-term problem. The governor asked for a thousand volunteers to help prison inmates in the cleanup. Eight thousand volunteers showed up. I've never seen a town that's just so completely level like this. The ruined homes were bulldozed, prefabs brought in. Two months to the day. My house came in the 30th of July. It was built at the prison in Springfield. And it was brought in on a big trailer. Um, the governor was here and gave me the keys to it. The raging winds caused 10 million pounds in damage as they tore apart homes and lives. We loved our house. I'd take my old house back for 20 bucks. We had a lot of memories. We raised our kids. It had a lot of character. It wasn't a new house, but it, we loved it. It was our home. Sometimes we think this is kind of a hotel and we'd like to move out into a house, but we got to create our own memories here and, and start new. It's like I told my wife, I said, we're going to build a house and we're going to move in and we're going to like it. Um, five days later, they called me at work. It was the day all the volunteers come over. Somebody had found him. He took off. He run and hit right in the middle of play. He, he did. That was... So he was really kind of, oh, he was just such a sweet kitty when we got him back. But he didn't have a claw front or back when he came back. Not a one. We do a lot of scientific studies of the tornadoes, and we're measuring the winds and learning all these scientific things. Um, but when we actually went in the next morning and saw the devastation that the tornado had caused, um, it really brought a lot of it home to us in terms of you know, why we're doing what we're doing, um, and to really think about the impacts of these storms. Project Rotate's Doppler on wheels clocked the Spencer tornado's winds at 220 miles an hour. Those winds cut a path of destruction a mile wide and killed six people out of Spencer's close-knit population of 320. Some of the survivors have returned and rebuilt their lives, but neither they nor Spencer will ever be the same.